Hi, it's Vex, and today we're gonna to talk about counter spells. That's right. If you see in the title and the thumbnail, we're actually gonna talk about the subject of me cutting counter spells and why I'm actually doing this. So, for if you haven't, if you lived under a rock, but you know, if you haven't played Magic that much, a counter spell basically says this: counter target spell. If somebody plays the spell on the stack, like you know, for instance, the source of plowshares. I counter it. It just doesn't resolve. That's basically what Counterspell does. Pure and simple. This is a Counterspell um, printed all the way in the beginning of Magic from Alpha. The original Counterspell called Counterspell. That's why everything's called a Counterspell because of this card right here. And simply it is blue blue counter target spell. Right? So why am I cutting this um, these kinds of spells for my deck? Let's actually talk about it. And I'm only talking about casual. I'm not talking about competitive. We'll, we'll get into a little competitive. I have a CEDH deck. I have my Najila deck with me here, right there, which we'll, we'll talk about. But uh, there's various forms of counter spells. There's counter spell itself. There's mana drain. The better counter spell. This is worth, you know, a couple cents, maybe a dollar. This is worth, you know, 50 bucks or 40 or 30. I, I don't know, sure. It's worth a lot more. Let's get right into it. I, I know I've babbled on. The reason I'm counting counter spells is because it's actually a one for one interaction. Uh, much like Swords of Plowshares, it's one for one interaction. Counter spell, uh, there's a specific timing with it, right? Somebody has to play a spell, and it has to be a spell worthy of being countered. You have to have a counter spell in your hand, and then you have to have the requisite two, you know, in this case, two blue mana to actually counter the spell. Usually, what happens is when you're playing with counter spell, um, you know, you either have a choice. You could deploy your threats, tap out, have a counter spell in your hand that you know you can't cast for the whole round, um, or you could just hold up two blue, and you can hope there's a spell that you you. I'm not I'm not sure you're hoping for a spell. I'm guessing you 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 have insurance that you're there's gonna be a spell for you to counter that's worthy of your counter spell. Remember, because you're playing against three players, when you counter a spell. Um, you and the player go the player with the spell that you countered go down one card But the other two players are are neutral on card in EDH itself card like swords of plowshares or counter spell are kind of like cards that put you down in cards uh, versus the whole entire table Because every card that you have should be a three for one or better um, To actually have card parity so counter spells are card neutral swords of plowshares um is different because counter spell answers the spell on the stack. Source plowshares answers the spell on the battlefield. So somebody could have played a spell ten turns ago if the if the game lasts that long. You could top deck your swords and actually swords of plowshares the threat. Um, otherwise, if you top deck a counter spell, you can't counter something that's happened a while back. So counter spells require a very specific situation of you having the mana, the opponent having the card, and you having the counter spell to do that. Um, and holding up counters actually can, you know, uh, reduce your tempo because instead of de deploying, let's say you're on turn four, you could deploy two mana threat, hold hold up a counter spell, you know, you instead of playing your four mana, uh, four mana value threat, your opponents can just, you know, constantly slam four mana value threat, four mana value threat, four mana value threat. You might counter one of them, but your other opponents, you know, have two four mana value threats. You only have a two mana value threat. So it does reduce tempo for you holding up this counter spell. With that in mind, the cheaper the counter spell is, the less tempo loss you, you, you'd lose. For instance, if your counter spell was Swan Song, you know, you could play a three mana value threat, hold up one mana for Swan Song. Um, but it's more restrictive, you know, Swan Song counters target enchantment, instant sorcery, and the, the opponent gets a bird. Uh, mana drain is a different story. Mana drain is actually worth the uh, Temple loss. I actually don't include Mana Drain unless I you know, include some decks, but I rarely include Mana Drain. But Mana Drain is worth the playing your two mana value threat because with Mana Drain, um, unlike Counter Spell, it'll give you the mana back of the mana value of the card that you countered. That's important because with Mana Drain, you're willing to counter almost anything to get a ramp on your turn. Counter Spell is a little different, but of course, the price value, price, again, the price is very, very different between these two. There's also you know fierce guardianship which is free. Now this is the exception to the rule, because I don't lose tempo, um, and then I can protect my commander. Fierce guardianship is the only counter spell I usually want to include in my decks, but the rest I'm I'm cutting. I'm I, I'm cutting counter spell, mana drain, swan song, 
the better counter spell, which doesn't put you down a card, that many down that much down on cards, is Arcane Denial. Counter target spell, its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of next um, turn's upkeep, and you draw a card at the beginning of next turn's upkeep. So this actually, if you count the cards, the uh, the control of the spell that you countered is up one card, but everybody else is at card neutral. So it's not it's not as bad as going down you, you and your opponent going down a card while the other two players stay in card card neutral with counter spell. And it's easier on the casting cost. Anyways, Arcane Denial, you have Negate. Another good counter spell here is Narset's Reversal. You know, counter spell, you copy it, then you counter it, or return it to your hand. Um, and then you have your free counters here. So I just want to go over the counter spells real quick here. You have Pact of Negation, Force of Negation, Force of Will. These are some free other free counters that go in the Fierce Guardianship pile. Then you have, you know, uh, tougher counter spells like Mystic Confluence that do more things than counter. I like Mystic Confluence um, because it gives you three modes. Uh, counter target spell list, control with pace three. Return target creatures, owner's hand, draw a card. You can pick th any three as many times as you want. There's also Dovin's Veto, some little splash white. So, uh, besides the tempo um, situation where uh, even if you counter, let's say, two players down, you counter their spell, the, the player after that could play a... a um, crazy powerful spell and that now you've burnt your counter spell uh and then you're just like oh, i wish i could counter that so that's kind of like the hard spot that counter spells put you in along with that i actually don't like playing against counter spells that much i mean if you want to play counter spells you can i don't really care um but i just i mean i care because the gameplay experience is kind of uh, awkward because you you kind of came to play and your opponent is just you know, you play some seven mana card, and you're excited to play it, and then the opponent just slams down a swan song, and you're just like, well, okay, cool, uh, okay. So you just like, you know, you don't get to play the cards that you came to play. And I really want people, you know, to come play the cards that they want to play. And then the awkward part is, and, and this happens every game, I, every game that I have three blue deck, I play against three blue decks, I'm just like, okay, now I have to figure out a way to play against, you know, each person having a counter spell, I have this game game winning card or this very cool card that I wanted to play. It's a must counter. They're going to counter it no matter what. Um, how do I bait this counter spell out? So it becomes a, a, a weird game of cat and mouse where you're just like trying to like play something that's important but not too important and you bait counter spells out. I, I'd rather just have a game where I just play Haymaker, Haymaker, Haymaker. Your opponents can play Haymaker, Haymaker, Haymaker. It's just more fun that way because uh, you know, you're like, oh, oh, oh. He's, he's got advantage, you got advantage. The advantage is flip-flopping instead of just being like, all right, play mine, counter. The opponent plays theirs, counter. So it just becomes a, a, a more drawn-out uh, EDH game where the excitement is not... Like, getting your spell countered is not an exciting EDH play, right? You play... I mean, of course, playing Bulls, the City, Citadel, Torment of Hellfire isn't exciting because you see it over and over again. But sometimes there's an exciting play you've never seen before. And, you know, just, just, just let it resolve. The cool part about count cutting counter spells is that in my deck, I, I have more room. Because usually before, when I built decks, I always had counter spell. That was my main stable. And I would always add in Swan Song because it's super cheap. And then maybe uh, other counter spells like Arcane Denial. And if I'm playing White, Dovin's Veto. So I have four slots dedicated to counter spells. Um, uh, this is before Fierce Guardianship was printed. Because like when I started playing with Fierce Guardianship, I realized that, hey, I'll just cut all four of these. I'll just add a Fierce Guardianship. The only reason I have this is I really want to protect my commander because uh, it's very vulnerable to Swords of Plowshares um, when it comes out. If I have a very powerful commander, I want to protect it um, because removal is a thing and removal is something I expect. Um, so I, I essentially cut all these cards. I can add three cards that are in theme or three removal spells. So it gives me more versatility that way instead of trying to react to my opponent's um, boards I, I could add you know my zombie deck or such like my scare god deck i think my original deck deck had counter spells i just for when, when i did will, will health um i i looked at my scare god deck used that as a base and then built will health and i said okay let's include fierce guardianship i cut all the counter spells i like, add include more zombies i have the option to include more removal but usually i just use those slots to include more zombies so i have more more spells on theme um by removing you know cards like Counter spell, mana drain, you know, narcissist reversal. 
just just by removing these counter spells i just have more themes related cards because in edh you know people came to play their cards and it does suck to get them countered now with regards to cedh right people came to get their cards countered that that is obvious um because it's such high power the cards are very compressed uh in my cedh deck i actually have lots of counter spells which i you know i'll just go over since make things interesting for this video yeah my my, my, my Nijila deck actually took out all the counter spells i have fierce guardianship so the free ones force of will free counter spells the one mana counter spells mental misstep it's actually very good in cedh i know this you can counter a soul ring with mental missteps but again the turns are very compressed you can counter demonic consultation other counter spells etc uh, mystic remora then you have dispel fluster storm miscast swan song so one mana counter spells and you have red counter spells like pyroblast which counters blue spells you know uh red elemental blast so you have all the one mana counter spells and you have you know other counter spells like Dovin's Veto, Drown the Lock. This is removal too. And your Mana Drain. And you have counter to counter spells, the, the uh, Veil of Summer. So I have 12 counter spells plus Veil of Summer in the deck. In CEDH, you, you expect... That's, that's, the, that's the type of game that you want... Um, you're expecting to play. Now in casual EDH, what you're expecting to do when you come to the table is have your spells resolve. Um, you know? And I, I think I want... To have, I'd rather sacrifice me winning the game by you know trying to hold up a, a free counter spell like force of negation or force of will and, and like you know countering things and slowing the game down. I'd rather have somebody do something cool and just let them enjoy it. I mean, yes, if people play their infinite combo, sure the game ends because I didn't have a counter spell, but you know I I don't mind that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be that person and be like nah counter it you know it might be somebody who's just really excited to play play finally have that combo because you know in, again in edh you sometimes you don't assemble some weird combo like you know sometimes a five card combo you've never seen before in your deck it has never come up and you know you finally get to assemble it somebody counters or spells it that kind of ruins your day but you know if you get to assemble it you win you know more more power to you so you have these free counter spells here. Packed. There we go. More free. More free counter spells. I, I had to put all. Sorry. Put all my free counter spells up top. So that. And then by cutting counter spells, you know, makes more room for more of my on theme things. More utility cards. More removal. Or, you know, other fun pet cards I can add into it. And it makes me more happy in general. Um, but if you like to play with counter spells, I, I don't fault you. I'll still play against you. I just will now. Um, I have a friend, you know, again, my play group that plays, you know, like eight counter spells. So I know that, hey, if I want anything resolved, I have to play around it. It does make my life a little more difficult because I have to, like, say either um, use two or three bait spells, hope that my opponent plays bait spells, figure out the turn order. It, it does cause a mental strain um, against your opponents if you have lots of counter spells because you have to, you have to figure out, uh, you know, if, if I'm turn order three. Or if I'm the, the person right after the counter spell player, then they always have their mana open up for me, so they might counter my stuff. Or if I'm like two turn two players away or three players away, if there's two players with counter spell, so you know it kind of requires some maneuvering um, gameplay when you play against counter spells. But it can be done. It's just a little to me. To me, e EH I want to be more relaxed in the EDH uh, casual one where I just slam cards, whatever they resolve. Now in CEDH, you know. Um, with all these counters, you want to sit there and think about it, because um, you you know your stuff's getting countered all all the time. Like you play your card, it's gonna get countered. You got the counter, the counter, and something that counters your counter, and you know it goes on and on. But in casual, I do like to take that gameplay strain. And and you know, uh, at rule zero, I'll say, I'll tell my opponent, say, hey, I'm playing blue. This is the only counter spell you you have to worry about. If you play a creature, uh, go ham. So I'll, I'll even actively tell. Um, People in my play group, I'm not playing these cards. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Anyways, this is all I have for today. Tell me if you play counter spells or not. You leave, leave your answers in the comments below. Tell me your views of, of how you view counter spells in EDH. Anyway, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe, my hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos. I have the TCG player and the new channel fireball affiliate link down in the description below. And as always, have a wonderful day.